Hi, this is Victoria Chang, and I'm a poet, and I've written four books of poetry, of which the most recent is Barbie Chang by Copper Canyon Press. And I think it's important to teach living poets because you know, children seem to lose interest in poetry at some point, and I think teaching living poets can uh, kind of regen regenerate that interest. In Hi, I'm Chloe Ann Clark. I'm the author of The Science of Unvanishing Objects, out from Finishing Line Press. First of all, canonically, we've focused on majority representation, so white, male, heteronormative. So teaching living poets allows us to expand beyond the canonical representation to ones that incorporate other lived experiences and viewpoints and voices. Hello, my name is Kyle Dargan. I'm uh, fortunate enough to be the author of five books, uh, most recently Anagnoresis, which came out this fall. Um, and why do I think it's important to teach living poets? When you teach living poets who are writing in the same time that we are all living, there's a better likelihood that someone will see something of themselves uh, in the work that they're reading. And I think that's always the first place you should start. Once you can get people invested in work where they can see their own experience validated, reflected, then they'll be willing to go with you other places. I'm Nicole Tong, and I'm the author of two collections, My Mind, A Chapbook of Poems, and How to Prove a Theory, the 2017 Jean Feldman Poetry Prize winner. I teach living poets because what better way to convince students that their voices matter than to show them voices like their own reflected in the literature they're reading. It's a beautiful circle and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Hi, I'm Ross White. I'm the author of How We Came Upon the Colony and The Polite Society. I'm also a faculty member at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill and I believe in teaching living poets because I believe poetry is a centuries-long conversation and how do we converse? Well, we listen to those who've spoken before us, and then we address those who've spoken before us, but also the people that we know will speak after us. So when kids only have the chance to read authors who died centuries ago, they don't necessarily have a strong sense that they're welcome in that conversation or that anybody's going to be listening to them. But the fact of the matter is, poetry is so lively today. We've got vibrant poets who depict the world as it exists today and who depict a world as it could be. Plus, it's certainly awesome every time you can get a poet to come to the classroom and talk to kids about the very practical path of becoming a writer, of living a life of letters, and of living a life of literature. So teach living poets. Hi, I'm Maggie Smith, and I'm a living poet. My books include Good Bones, and The Well Speaks of Its Own Poison, and my first book, Lamp of the Body. When I teach, I primarily teach living poets. And it's because I think students are more excited about and invested in work that they can relate to and that they can see their own experiences and culture and emotions reflected in. I really believe that students will feel more comfortable with poetry as an art, both reading it and writing it, if they are exposed to models that make sense to them, that feel true to their experiences. And so the last couple of semesters I've taught, I've taught only living writers. Hi, I'm Hanif Abdurraqib. I'm the author of the poetry collection, The Crown Ain't Worth Much, and the essay collection, They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. And I believe in teaching living poets because it reshapes the canon and it reforms young people's minds around what poetry can look like and what contemporary poetry is doing to speak to not just our political moments, but our pop cultural moments as well.